Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. I'm making this video because there seems to be a lot of questions, myths, and misinformation when it comes to modding for the Nintendo Switch console. Now, I'm making this video to be a comprehensive guide on debunking these myths and hopefully end the spread of misinformation in the community. Now, this video is solely going to talk about the Switch console overall and not about modding any specific game. Now, I will make another video for Animal Crossing modding myths and tips for newbies in my next video so make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and like the video if you guys enjoy my content. First and foremost, can anyone with a Nintendo Switch hack it? No, you can't hack any Nintendo Switch. You need a V1 model Switch. Usually this means Switches produced from early 2018 and prior can be modded. Now there was a specific vulnerability in these early Switch models which allow modding possible. All new Switches that have come out since have this vulnerability quote unquote patched which is where the term patched and unpatched come from. The easiest way to check if your Switch is either patched or unpatched would be to simply go to ismyswitchpatch.com and type in the serial number with the four letter prefix on the underside of your Switch to see if you can mod it. Now question number two, you said only V1 model Switches are moddable, but what about the V2, Switch lights, and OLEDs online that are hacked? Now yes, you will see these online and there is a way for these patched units units to be modded, but this does require a mod chip install which requires taking apart your switch and having soldering skills. Buying a pre-modded unit with a mod chip is also not really recommended as you don't know what the seller has done to the switch or if it's even worth it for your use case scenario. I do highly recommend finding a V1 model switch to mod yourself so that you can learn how to do it on your own. Next up is, is installing custom firmware on my switch illegal? In the US, installing custom firmware on your Switch console is not illegal. What you do on your Switch after installing custom firmware like piracy is illegal. Check your country's laws for more information if you are concerned about this. Can I get banned for hacking or modding my Nintendo Switch? Now this is a very complicated question and I wish I can give you guys a straight answer, but it does require you to understand a lot of technical terms. I'll go more in depth in this video later, but the short answer is yes. Of course you can get banned for modding your Nintendo Nintendo Switch. However, this depends on what you are doing with your Switch. So let's talk about that, which will lead to our next question. I don't understand what OFW, SysCFW, or MUMMC are. Do I even need them? Now there are three options for your Switch. You can boot it into OFW, which is your original operating firmware, which has no mods basically your vanilla switch. There's SysCFW, meaning you are essentially booting into your switch with custom firmware loaded. Your SysCFW and OFW are shared. Whatever you do on one is always reflected on the other. And lastly, there is MUMMC. Think of having an MUMMC as having a second switch inside your Switch. Anything you do on your Emunand won't show in OFW or in SysCFW. Remember what I said earlier, SysCFW and OFW are always shared. Now you might be asking, what are the benefits of having an MUMMC? The official Nintendo homebrew guide recommends you use the MUMMC method when modding your Switch. However, this can be a bit misguiding since not everyone requires an MUMMC for doing simple things and mods that don't affect competitive online play. An MUMMC is meant to be used for full offline play only. Since your MUMMC is stored separately on your SD card and has no ties to your main console, anything you do on there is technically, and I put this in quotes, safe. However, this means that you should never go online on your MUMMC if you choose to do so. The main people who require or even find an MUMMC useful are those who are using it mainly for piracy. If you are not using your Switch to do any piracy or doing experimental testing for mods in games that would normally get you banned if you go online, then you have no need for an MUMMC. Here's an obvious question, is piracy bad? Yes. 
Piracy is bad. You should always pay for the games that you play and give money to the developers who work hard in producing a game for you. Now, the biggest reason Big N goes after players for bans are due to running pirated versions of their games. So I'm only modding my Switch so I can mod Animal Crossing and Pokemon. Do I still need an MUMMC? No, there haven't been any reported bans to date for these games for just simple save editing or live injection. Most of us use this CFW and take our mods online for these games. This is how Treasure Islands and Order Bots for Animal Crossing work and how Pokemon Sysbots work online. You can mod other games too such as reskinning in Super Smash Bros and modifying training mode and still not risk any bans. However, cheating in competitive online games, especially like Splatoon and modifying character stats in Smash for example will get you a ban on your console. Be smart about what you're doing and if you're unsure, ask a credible source or Discord server before doing it yourself. So now you might be wondering, I created an MUMMC before watching this video and now I realize I had no need for it. Am I at risk? Will I get banned now? No. Simply, just having an MUMMC does not mean you will get banned. Like I said, you should never take your MUMMC online on Nintendo's servers. As long as you're not doing that, nor have it done prior, you're safe. The reason for this is that if you've already gone online on your SysCFW or OFW, and then proceeded to go online on your MUMMC after creating one, then this will cause a mismatch in logs that will get sent to Nintendo. This is what leads to a console ban 99% of the time due to people not realizing what an MUMMC is for. Just because an MUMMC is quote unquote safer does not mean you can take it online as it's meant for offline play and use. Alright, I know that was an earful to hear, and maybe you'll have to go back and hear it a few more times, but the more you listen to it, the more it will make sense. Let's head to the next statement that I do hear a lot. Now I use SysCFW to load up my mods, and then I switch over to OFW without CFW to play online to be safe. This is a myth and it is not true. You're wasting your time and an extra step if you're doing stuff on SysCFW and then booting up your Switch normally in OFW. Remember what I said earlier? SysNAND and your OFW are shared and use the same NAND. Whatever you do on one is already reflected on the other one. I personally have all my Switches booted into SysCFW and that's how I do everything, including downloading games on the eShop, playing any of my purchase games, Games, loading games up with mods, etc. There isn't a reason for you to switch from SysCFW to OFW after doing any changes. Another question I see asked is if a jig is even necessary or if a piece of tin foil or a paper clip would suffice instead to enter RCM mode. Well that's on you, your switch is an expensive piece of hardware and a jig only costs around anywhere from 2 to $7 depending on where you buy it from. But buying a jig means you don't have to worry about messing up your switch. Sure, a piece of tinfoil or a paper clip are easy to access in your home, but you risk shorting the wrong pins and then kiss your modding adventures goodbye. Let's say I do get banned, will it be my Nintendo Online account? Now I hear this question a lot. No, if you decide to go through with modding your Switch console and somehow messed up along the way, whether it be piracy or going online on your Emunand when you weren't supposed to, it would only lead to a console hardware ban. Your Nintendo Online account is generally safe. I haven't seen or heard of anyone getting their Nintendo Online account being banned unless you were doing some sketchy fraudulent behavior on the eShop where Nintendo deemed it necessary to ban your online account. This includes like sketchy chargebacks. Another popular question is, does it matter if I have a digital or physical game on my modded Switch console? It doesn't matter whether you have a digital or physical game. Remember, if your Switch console got banned, it wouldn't matter if you had a digital game or a physical copy, as you can't play those games online anyway on the banned console. You don't even need an MUMMC once it's banned since you have no reason to protect yourself from Nintendo since you're already banned from their servers. So 
a band switch isn't entirely useless if you get my drift and is still worth a lot of money if you were to sell it online. I do have to admit there are some upsides to owning a digital game since I have multiple switches. I use it to game share my one digitally bought game on two separate consoles at the same time. Now I do have a video on game sharing so feel free to check that out if you're interested. I'll also link it in the description below. Should I turn auto updates off for when the switch firmware updates? Yes, it's good practice to turn this off since updating your switch might render Atmosphere and Hecate useless until there is an update for them. Now we are getting towards the end of the video so hang in there, there's only a few more questions that I need to get answered. Now the next one is, what is a Switch firmware update versus a software update? A Switch firmware update is when there is an update for the console itself. A software update is in relation to a game update. Now when your Switch firmware is updating, it affects Atmosphere and Hecate. So it's possible you might need to wait for those two to update uh, in order for you to get back into CFW. This is why we advise you to keep auto updates off so you can still use your Switch in CFW while the devs of AMS and Hecate push out an update. Just remember that a software update for a game has no effect on Atmosphere or Hakate. However, the tools you use for those games might be affected instead. So let's say NHSE or Poker for Animal Crossing or PK Hex for Pokemon would need to be updated if there was a software update. Now you really don't need to panic if you do accidentally update on these days, especially if you're a newbie. You might run into some errors, but this is only because you don't have the updated programs. Once they're all updated, all you have to do is put them back onto your console and you'll be running back in CFW in no time. Now regarding updates, can I update my Switch firmware while I'm on CFW or do I need to go back into stock to do it? Uh, yes you can. I think I mentioned this before but I always play on Sys CFW and I update my console firmware while on custom firmware also. It doesn't matter if you update your Switch first or if you wait for the Atmosphere and Hecate downloads first. There's no right order so feel free to do it whichever way you want. Can I hack my Switch if I have a MacBook? Yes you can. However, in order to run some of the applications and save editors, you might need to run Parallels or dual boot Windows on your Mac. Now this does conclude my video, I'm sure you guys still have a lot of questions regarding modding that I might not have covered in this video, so if you still got questions, write it in the comments below and I can try compiling them for a second part for this video. My next video is going to be about Animal Crossing modding FAQs, so make sure to keep an eye out. And if you do enjoy my videos and my other content, please make sure to give them a like, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. It's super appreciated, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.